These days, pretty much everybody has a voice assistant. Maybe you like Siri or Alexa or Google. There may even be a couple people out there that actually use Cortana. Nah, that's crazy. All these voice assistants have come a long way, and they're pretty useful, except Cortana. However, our biggest complaint with all these voice assistants is that they aren't much to look at. We're just talking to a box. Some have screens, but they don't even show anything cool. It's just boring. Where's the charm? Where's the magic? Where's the body? We've had it with boring voice assistants, and we're going to do something about it. We're going to take an open source voice assistant project and a DIY animatronic project and smash them into each other. So we're going to make a body for a voice assistant. If we're going through all the effort to make a body, it's got to be something cool. We could make it look like a robot, but nah, too cliche. We thought about making it look human, but nah, too creepy. How about a dragon? Oh yeah. So that's our basic idea. We're going to build an animatronic dragon as a body for our voice assistant. We have three goals for this project. Number one, it needs to look like a dragon. Neither of us is naturally artistic, so this could be kind of challenging. Number two, we need to be able to talk to it, and it needs to be able to talk back to us. And number three, it needs to react with movement. And it needs to breathe fire. What? And it needs to breathe fire. A dragon made of wood? Breathing fire? Hmm. Permission denied. Okay, fine. Smoke? Is smoke okay? Smoke? Smoke, you say? Hmm. I don't see how you can get into too much trouble with the smoke. Permission granted. This is a pretty big project, so we're going to split it up. Gers is going to tackle the first goal of making it look like a dragon. And breathe fire. Meanwhile, I'll work on making it listen, respond, and move. This is Maxwell. He doesn't know it yet, but he is about to undergo a transformation. We are going to convert this animatronic parrot into a dragon. Maxwell is an animatronic kit that you can purchase from Botango. Botango is an amazing piece of software that empowers us to control Maxwell, just like the animatronics at Disney. No, Botango is not sponsoring this video. We just love their work. They have taken the complex mathematics involved in making smooth movements with servos and made it easy for anyone to build and control their own custom animatronics. In order to make it look like a dragon, we are going to have to get rid of the parrot head, mouth, tail, and wings. The body which holds the motors and the feet can stay as they are. The aesthetics of the dragon are really beyond my capabilities to generate on my own. So I'm going to rely heavily on AI to help me out with this. No, not that AI. I'm talking about artistic inspiration. We found this cool looking image of an artistic dragon online and I'm going to base my design off of this. I really can't use it exactly as it is because it needs to fit around the existing structure of the animatronic that we already have. So this will be more of a design guideline than a rule. So I threw this into my CAD software and went into full design mode. Before I knew it, I had some parts ready for testing. And you know what's important? Having fun along the way. Which, let's be honest, mostly involved me pretending to be a dragon. I'm a dragon. The eyes are absolutely crucial to this project. Why? Because they're the window to the dragon's soul. It's where we can truly bring this creature to life, conveying its emotions with just a glance. And the key to achieving this is through the power of color. By incorporating LEDs into the eyes, we have the opportunity to imbue them with a spectrum of emotions. Here's the challenge. We don't want these LEDs to be visible. We need to ensure perfect diffusion so that the light radiates evenly without adding any distracting hotspots. If the LEDs are too close to the surface, they'll create those unwanted hotspots. I've delved deep into this light diffusion and I can assure you it's simpler than you might imagine provided you have enough space for it. Now the head doesn't quite offer us that luxury, but there's a brilliant solution. 
instead of looking directly at the light and trying to diffuse it, will bounce it off the surrounding 3D printed surfaces. This creates a beautifully diffused glow that brings the eye to life in a mesmerizing way. And what's truly serendipitous is how this technique inadvertently illuminates the entire head. The subtle play of light through the openings adds an extra layer of depth that I absolutely love. The artwork showcased these captivating curved spines on the back, so naturally that was the next on the agenda. Sticking to the overarching theme of impressive and overpowering, I knew I needed multiple spines instead of just one rigid line down the back. And you know the drill. Odd numbers always work better in situations like these. So it was a toss up between three or five. I figured more is always better. Okay, so I got a whole bunch of these paper cutouts that represent uh, some different dragon wings um, to kind of give me a little bit of a heads up, a head start before I start modeling things. Uh, because this, from here on out, I really don't have any pre-designed, uh, preconceived notions of what the dragon should look like. Um, so we're just trying to figure out uh, what's the next plan. So here I've cut these out because it's a lot faster to just cut it out on paper than it is to laser cut things and get it designed. So we'll just take a couple looks at different dragon wings. I don't like this. And there's this one. It's pretty much the same, but it has a little bit, has the dragon hook here as the thumb and these are the fingers. Again, looks a little flat. Actually, it looks a lot like a parrot wing. <laughs> I think I like this one. It has a lot of character and the fact that it's just got lots of little torn edges and whatnot. And then I can put another layer on top of it because of this. To give it like the bone structure of it i'll take a picture of this with my phone and then i'll import it into the cad and and design off of this nope i hate the wings nothing is meshing together well the head is pointy with horns and the back has curved features and the wings look like like well really ugly parrot wings if i'm going to fix this i need to talk to a dragonologist luckily I know just the guy to talk to. Hey, thanks, uh, Durs the Dragonologist. Thanks for taking my call. I, I, I'm really having a hard time here. I, I, the dragon that I've been working with, you know, we're, we're trying to evolve the parrot into a dragon, and it's just not working. Well, you know, the wings, they just, they look too much like a parrot's wings. They're just kind of tiny, and, uh, and it just doesn't have that uh, feel to it. Do you have any suggestions? I see. So you're having trouble with the wings. That's not surprising. Turns out wings and dragons are not as straightforward as you might think. There's a lot of debate about whether dragons have four legs and two wings or whether they only have two back legs and their arms are actually the wings. Now some would say that a creature that has two back legs and wings and looks like a dragon is actually a wyvern. But as we've seen demonstrated by the dragons in the Harry Potter movies and Smog from Lord of the Rings and the dragons from Game of Thrones, the creature can have back legs and arms that are wings and still be considered a dragon. All right. Thank you so much. Realizing that a dragon walks on its wings forces the animatronic into a dragon form, and making sure every part matches up from the tip of the nose to the tail is crucial. So I am taking the time to redesign the back spines. It's all about that cohesive look, and you know what? I think it's there. Now that we've tackled all of that mess, it's time to focus on the tail. It's going to be static, meaning it won't move on its own, but it will be repositionable. How? Well, I'm making out of a series of linked segments, sort of like a chain, and it'll all be held together using these nifty 3D printed hinge pins. Trust me, it's going to be solid. Turns out, it's actually too solid. So I got the dragon tail all finished, but I have a problem with it. It's too rigid. It just doesn't fall naturally. 
I want it to be a little bit more flexible so that it so that it falls and droops naturally and follows the contour of the of wherever it's going to sit on so it looks more natural. So I've got to fix that. Luckily, this can be fixed with a little bit of sanding. Look at that. Yes. Now with the tail in place, the dragon is really taking shape and I'm really liking how it's turning out. But the wings, there's something about the wings that just bugs me. I think the wings are too close to the body and are making it look too sleek for the size of the body and tail. So I'm going to reprint these links and I'm going to make them double the size and that's going to make the wings move outward and give it a more imposing stance. I think that's pretty good. I'm liking that much better. To make our dragon listen and respond, we're going to mash it together with the Home Assistant Voice project. Home Assistant Voice uses an ESP32 connected to a microphone and a speaker, and it runs some ESP Home code to function as a voice assistant. It's super customizable and constantly getting better, so it's a great platform for a project like this. The ESP Home Voice Assistant component gives us a whole list of events that we can use to trigger automations. So we can pick something like on wake word detect and link it to the flipping of a switch. Then we can link that switch to activating the animation on our dragon. These are the available events that we're going to use. Listening, thinking, replying, and error. So we need to make a different animation for each of those states. Making animations in Bot Tango is actually quite easy. Create a new animation, put the movable body parts in the starting location you want, then advance the timeline and move the body parts to a new position. We just keep doing that. Advance the timeline, move the body parts. Advance the timeline, move the body parts until we're done. Now we repeat that process to make four different animations, one for each of those states. Then we're ready for the next step. Maxwell has multiple motors to control different positions of the robot. Each motion is a degree of freedom. So Maxwell has four degrees of freedom. He has one degree for his wings that can move in and out, one degree for his mouth that can open and close, and two for his head, one for moving it side to side, and one for moving it up and down. The Bot Tango kit uses servo motors to move. Those servos are run by a semi-custom Arduino Uno. The default for running the servos is to connect the Arduino to a PC with a USB cable. But you can also export the animations and upload them directly to the Arduino. Then in the Arduino code, we can set some of the Arduino pins to listen for a signal. When one of those pins is activated, the dragon will act out that particular animation. It took a bit of finagling. But eventually, with some help from Evan, the creator of the Bot Tango software, we got it working. Hey Jarvis, turn off keyboard. Turn off the light. Hey Jarvis, turn on keyboard. Turn on the light. Our dragon needs a cool name. One of the best things about the Home Assistant Voice Project is that you can create custom wake words. The process for making your own wake words is pretty involved. But fortunately for us, there's a repository full of custom names that have already been created by the community. Looking through the list of available names, we found one we like, Winston. To use this name, we download the TF Lite file and plop it into our open wake word folder. Then it'll be available in our list of wake words in Home Assistant. Well, that's it for now. It may seem like we're done, but really, we're only about halfway. These are the things 
we still need to do. Paint and dragonize the body, build a base to hide all the electronics, add the fire, um, smoke, add the smoke, and improve the audio responses. When we get all that done, we'll make another video to finish up the build. That's all for now. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time, adios.